thank you again, everyone, for uh, joining us this morning. Um, this is a very distinguished group. I've been involved in several of these media events, and this is certainly the largest group. Um, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to come here today and give us an opportunity to talk about a, a project that's um, uh, very important to me. I've been working on this for almost a decade, uh, closing the loop with uh, the plastics from HP's cartridges uh, back into original HP cartridges. And I'm uh, excited to be able to talk to you about that accomplishment and continued innovation in closing the loop. I'm also honored today to be sharing in this presentation uh, with my good friend and, uh, and excellent partner of HP, John Luke Laverne, uh, the president and CEO of the Laverne Group and, and founder of uh, this company. Um, without their contribution, we would not be here today to talk to you about closing the loop on, on these plastics. And it's certainly innovative partners uh, that have helped HP. Uh, accomplish what we'll be talking about today. We're going to go through three main areas today, talking about the initial breakthrough uh, with the closing of recycling. Um, but I'd also like to uh, talk a bit about what we've done uh, since that breakthrough in terms of ongoing innovation uh, as a demonstration of HP's continued commitment. Um, John Luke will talk a bit about plastics in general and his company and what their contribution was to this effort and talk to you about how they created a recipe that brought together used plastic from our cartridges uh, and created a plastic that could be dropped into uh, millions of dollars worth of molding equipment and production equipment around the world as a direct replacement uh, for virgin resins. And then we'll wrap up the discussion today with uh, a, a discussion of the accomplishments of the program and a life cycle assessment uh, that we performed. So the closed loop plastics recycling program begins and ends, of course, with the HP customer. Uh, the customer purchases an HP printer, purchases HP printing supplies, uses them, and then uh, recycles them through one of the many planet partners program that Amica was uh, just speaking about. Um, when we receive these back through the planet partners program, uh, the cartridges will go to one of our primary recycling facilities. And then uh, the, the cartridges are, are recycled and we recover the plastic out of those cartridges. The material is sent to uh, the Laverne facility where they will combine it with other materials to create a resin capable of being put back into the HP original cartridges. Um, you see here a quote uh, from the Society of Plastics Engineers. In 2008, HP received the highest environmental award given out by this group for the accomplishments of this program. Uh, not only for their technical achievements, but one of the reasons that I'm most proud of it is they acknowledge the fact that um, we were exemplary in our use of our suppliers and creating an ecosystem with other companies uh, to, to achieve this success. And certainly the Laverne Group was a key part of that, that ecosystem. So it would be easy in a 30 or 40 minute presentation to give you the impression that this effort was uh, obvious from the outset, that the solution was easy and uh, that there were no, no issues. Not, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, we began trying to figure out how to close the loop with this plastics in 2000. And it wasn't until 2005 that we had a quality resin capable of being put back into, as I said, HD molding equipment and into HD production lines. And it, I think that speaks to the patience that HP had and the desire that HP had to do the right thing with this material. And uh, my management, certainly, and uh, management above them was willing to give my team the time to figure this out. But I think it's an, an even greater accomplishment that 
a company as small as the Laverne Group, hundreds of times smaller than HP, took those five years um, where they were making no money from selling HP resin, and key people in their organization were involved in this development, but uh, to continue to have the foresight and patience again uh, to, to work through this development process and work through the um, corporate hurdles uh, at, at HP uh, until we were finally able to achieve success in 2005. But we didn't stop there. And in 2005, we had basically created a proof of concept. We started out in one region um, with using this recycled plastic in it, and it grew from there. And we've continued to innovate and will continue to innovate with this effort. And I'll talk a little bit later about uh, three of these areas, uh, the recycling process innovation, uh, supply infrastructure improvements, and also how we're leveraging a template that we've created um, with this specific plastic and this specific product into other plastics and, and other HP products. Um, but before we go into that, I'd like to invite uh, John Luke Laverne uh, to talk a bit about um, plastics in general and his organization's contribution to the program.
So what I was saying is basically our knowledge is really around the polymer chemistry and also the mechanical of these things. The contamination removal, which is really, really key to us, we really have to take this into a very, very specialized point. And that's our technology. It consists of many little things put together. It's not only one equipment, but it's many things like a, a one little piece of a puzzle missing would not work. But all this put together, you end up with a product that makes what we're, we're doing today. And also, uh, to show the extent of, you know, when we talk about the contamination, to show the extent of what we've done, uh, we're talking specifically about each piece product today, but we've developed products for customers that are using the product back into food applications. So if you add in a product, the last thing you would want, something in food is adding in contamination. So that's the extreme uh, version of what it is, but it shows the extent from the technology of the contamination. Once we've also done this, because at the end of the day we said, okay, we developed the technology to decontaminate, we developed the technology to do the compound. One thing that we were looking at and we're quite proud of is we've introduced also the concept of this management. We've done uh, some work in the automotive world. We've done some work in uh, appliances, but especially we've done uh, some work with HP in terms of this management. And I guess we'll share about this a little later. But what we do now is we're taking not only the step of the decontaminations and all this, but we're able to even take products and segregate them. That helps us to make a featuring that's so good that you don't have to worry so much about all the other contaminants. So that's where we are today in terms of the site. We've gone from all these ones all the way down to this land. And that's also something that we're quite proud of. The idea also when we make a product, what's really important when we call our regenerations of polymers, what's really important is we make a product that meets specifications the same way uh, version producer. So for us, the last thing we want is our customer to say, oh, by the way, because it's recycled, we have to, you know, accept the few hurdles. No, that's not the way to go about it. We make a product that meets specification day in and day out consistently. HP requires this. The last thing that we want is for something that would not be um, good for their customers. Obviously, we participate in some of them. And at the end of the day, what we try to do is we take polymers that we do, uh, and instead of going into lower end applications, you know, like two by four or plastics or wood, we call it, we take the plastic back and we can go back into original applications, which creates high value for this polymer, and, but in turn also creates good products for our customers. So this is basically how we do our things. Uh, as an example, specifically for this product, what I wanted to share with you is a little bit um, how this product consists of. And one of the, the plastics we're talking is PET, polyethylene which is these bottles over here, and other polymers like uh, or carpet, things like this. But just specifically for the bottles, there's over 500 billion PET bottles every year that are made over that. There's less than 20% that are being collected right now and recycled. So what's exciting for us is that there's still room to grow in terms of supply. As a challenge when you recycle, it's nice to have the technology, but you've got to have supply. We can see that there's room to grow in many, many uh, regions. Uh, and once we have this, then we can allow to take that polymers back into different kinds of applications. But specifically for this one, which is a cartridge, we use that product as a base. Um, HP, um, also, when we uh, did the product, we've got 80 million kilos of bottles that have been used in the art bed. So it's, it's a large, it's not an R&D project, it's a real commercial project that's been used. It's the equivalent of 1.5 billion plastic bottles that did go to the landfill. So this is one of the things that's really important. And we've done this you know, globally, and we'd like to expand this thing. What we do is we upcycle the bottle. The bottle goes into a very high sophisticated application. So, you know, this makes the cartridge. So that's something that we were able to develop. What's the recipe? I guess, uh, again, not to get too much into the, uh, the technical aspect of it, but uh, when we started that program, Dean was saying we started in 2000, 2000 2005, was the, the development stage, and we had uh, our challenge, if I could say it this way. One of the things we add is uh, when we make a recipe, we take a portion of the ink 
cartridge back into the formula. Just to give you an example, at the time, that product was made from other resin producers. There was more than one, there was a few. They had their own chemistry within that polymer. So what we had to do is take this product, analyze it, and develop a way of taking all these different chemistries back into the product. And then by doing that, and we had, there was many formulations going back and forth finding these things. Back with this, what we wanted to do is because there was a certain feed stream that was there, but we needed to, to increase. So what we did is we increased, the, we increased it by using the, this material. That was probably the most complex things in terms of, of uh, compounding and the, the, the chemistry because this, apart from the contaminations which we had to overcome by itself in the early stage, we had to also overcome the chemistry around these two bottles. What with that, what we do also is we put plastics additives. So once we've got these two streams of control, there's also additive that's put into the product to allow us to make the product meet the specifications. And this, um, people will be seeing this this afternoon. Uh, we're quite excited that we've extracted this uh, technology into Asia, specifically in Vietnam. What you'll be seeing, is, you'll see today is you'll be seeing the compounding facility that takes this. It's a very well automated product uh, machine. So obviously, it's not going. You're not going to see many things, but what you're going to see is going to say a unit that takes these all these materials, put them back into a product, into a talus, and that's what we ship to customer to our customers. And they make in this case we are they make the cartridge back. So that's how it's done. That's the recipe. Obviously, the recipe itself is much more complex than this. There's all kinds of additives that goes into these things. And I'm sure you could appreciate that. This is not something that we disclose publicly, but obviously we're, uh, we could talk about other things. This, this, we do this for all kinds of other customers, but this one specifically is an example of the extent of, of the problems that we do. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you very much. John Luke and I 
after having gotten our original success with the closed loop plastic, we're sitting down one evening talking about where we wanted to take this program going forward. And the thing that bothered us the most about what we were doing uh, at that time was the plastic that we were losing through the, through the current process. And so we talked about, um, he told me about his experience with disassembling automobiles, disassembling uh, uh, appliances, and I told him about a small lab project that I had been working on where we basically reverse assembled the cartridge, taking it apart. And so the Laverne group decided to go ahead and invest in a piece of prototype equipment to disassemble the cartridges. And literally, that is what it does. A, a cartridge is loaded into this machine, the label is taken off, the lid is taken off, the foam is taken out, and then we remove the metal. And what you end up with is a lid that is pure plastic and a body that is pure plastic um, that require none of this secondary processing. And so some of the benefits that we learned uh, from the prototype machine, which is in the Burns facility in Montreal, Canada, was that we can increase our plastic recovery uh, from the 60% uh, that we were currently experiencing to 90% plastic recovery. It also enables us to reduce the number of processing nodes. So back over on the original process, after we recover the plastic, we need to send it on for further refining to remove contaminants from it. When we do the disassembly, uh, we get plastic that's clean enough that it can go directly from the primary recycling location to the burn facility. And with reducing the number of nodes and the amount of processing that's required of, of uh, the recycling, we're reducing the energy and water use uh, in, in our process. And because we're disassembling the cartridges, there's a the potential that parts of the cartridge which today have no value, such as the foam and the recovered ink, um, there is the potential that we can have development projects to figure out uh, ways to recycle those. Now, to, to be clear, today we do not have solutions for the foam or the recovery team, um, but this, this process uh, enables the potential for, for that to happen, and it's something that we're currently looking at. And I'm pleased to announce today that uh, actually, after going through this uh, pilot process uh, with uh, Laverne, HP management team decided to invest in disassembly equipment. And today in uh, Tennessee, they'll be installing the first production version of this tool. And it is our intent to go in the next year to install this disassembly equipment uh, around the world in our recycling locations. The second area that we're looking to uh, improve and innovate and find uh, increased efficiency is in our closed loop infrastructure. And so today what we're doing is after the customer purchases and returns the cartridge, as I said, it will go to one of HD's primary recycling locations um, where, it, where it goes through the initial recycling process. But as I said, the material, the plastic that is recovered, then needs to be further refined. And there's a single location in North America where that happens um, before it can go on to uh, the Burns compounding facility in, in Montreal. The material that the Burns creates then, of course, goes to the HP manufacturing locations around the world where they create cartridges that are returned to the customer. What we, as we looked at this existing infrastructure, there were a couple things that we wanted to try to, um, obviously, to improve the environmental benefit uh, of this program and to lower the cost of the program. We wanted to reduce the number of nodes and also lower 
the uh, amount of transport of this material around the world. Um, now that's not as easy as you would think when we have um, differences between where we manufacture um, HP cartridges and where many of our markets are. So there's no way that we will ever be able to do away with movement of this material uh, in, in some ways. But we can certainly work to uh, limit and uh, eliminate some of, some of the waste of transport of material. And so beginning with the opening of this Laverne facility, we're now moving to an infrastructure which again begins with the customer, has the material going to um, our primary recycling locations. Again, again, as I mentioned, rather than the material being shredded at these locations, we will be disassembling the cartridges, which means they will not have to go to that secondary refining, but they, they can go directly to compounding locations, um, the Laverne compounding locations. Now you see here, um, as you're going to see today, that Laverne has expanded from their Montreal facility and um, is, is now in, including a Vietnam location, which is really exciting for HP. Um, there's business continuity benefits, there's benefits associated with uh, this these facilities being close to uh, manufacturing in Asia Pacific. There's a lot of really good reasons uh, for why we're excited about this uh, facility that the Reds opening in Vietnam. And then from these two compounding locations, um, we will work with Laverne to figure out what is the mix of material that will flow to the various HP manufacturing locations. And we'll develop that over the next few years. It won't be completely localized. As I said, there will be some material that will need to be shipped. Um, but as much as we can, we want to minimize the shipment of the material and, and maximize uh, the amount of environmental benefit that we get out of this program. We'll finish again with uh, cartridges being made at our facilities and, and, and sent to the customer. So the last uh, innovation that I'd like to talk to you about is what HP has done to take the template of this closing the loop, reusing the plastic. What we've done to um, take that template and apply it to other plastics. So as John Luke mentioned, um, we, we were working here primarily with PET plastic originally. Um, so expanding this closed loop solution to polypropylene, which is another plastic that HP uses in our supplies. And also expanding uh, this template into hardware material that we recover from our recycling locations around the world. And so with regards to expanding into other plastics, we actually have had a breakthrough um, with cartridges being uh, successfully recovered out of polypropylene cartridges and put back into HP cartridges. Small numbers, um, but again, the PET program started with smaller numbers uh, at the outset and, and grew. And we're currently working with Laverne on a similar development program with polypropylene to what we were doing with PET. Now, you'll remember John Luke talked about us getting bottle material, PET bottle material, which was very opportune uh, with the PET program because it gave us a stream of material that we could merge with HP cartridges. The real struggle with polypropylene is for us to find a stream of quality polypropylene that we can merge our recovered cartridge material with. And we're working with the bird on identifying some of those streams, and in some cases, creating new streams where none exist today. So a lot of, of plastics recycling is about creating markets so that innovators will go out there and figure out ways to sort, separate, and capture. If no one wants to use recycled polypropylene, which has, has not been the case in the past, then there's, then there's no good uh, streams of that material today. And so that is what we're, we're working on with, with the burn. And we expect a breakthrough uh, by next year in, in the 
this area. We're also working with Laverne on um, our hardware product plastic. And there's a number of other issues related to hardware products. Um, generally, um, in, in a printer, for instance, there will be multiple plastics. Um, sorting of the, of the uh, incoming materials is very important. Um, and there's other issues. But we're working with Laverne to create closed loop solutions in the hardware. And again, uh, by this time next year, I'm certain that we'll be talking about uh, success in, in that area as well. So again, taking the template of the Recycle PET program and expanding it out um, in a couple of these areas, development efforts, no success to report yet, but um, I, I'm certain that uh, we're going to make that progress. So I'll close up by talking uh, about a, a life cycle assessment that, that HP has done uh, on this closed loop PET program, and then also uh, uh, just a bit of information about uh, the numbers that uh, we've generated with this with this effort. So last year, as we approached what was a significant milestone at the time of one billion HP cartridges containing recycled content, we wanted to quantify what the environmental benefit of using this material was. We were confident that there was an environmental benefit, but we had not gone through the effort to provide numbers uh, to that. And so what HP did was we contracted with an outside life cycle assessment company who did uh, a full analysis of the HP uh, process. And their analysis included the energy that was required for us to take back cartridges, the energy and water use in recycling the cartridges. I even went so far as to look at uh, the energy used in the Laverne uh, processes in Montreal, breaking it down into how much of that energy was from hydropower, how much was from coal. Um, so it was a very complete analysis. And um, as you can see, um, it showed that using the recycled, the closed loop recycled material, despite all of our processing and movement of material around the world, reduced the carbon footprint as compared to virgin plastic, reduced fossil fuel consumption, and also saved dramatically on, on water. There's a lot of numbers in this slide, and um, I'm certain it'd be confusing to go through all of them, and I'll be happy in the Q&A or in any of the one-on-ones to go through some of these details. But for the one billion cartridge milestone, um, we showed that over the six years that it had taken us to achieve that, um, there had been a 22% reduction in carbon footprint as if we had made those cartridges with virgin resin. Um, less than half of the fossil fuels used uh, to, to use this closed loop resin. And this makes sense given that plastics are largely derived from petrochemicals. So if we're able to recover them and reuse them, we're not having to pull oil out of the ground. And um, almost a 70% uh, reduction in, in water use when not having to go from oil to plastic, but from a recycled recovered material. Um, to, a, to a recycled plastic. So this was the savings across the full six years of our program. But we also wanted to see, we knew that we had improved and gotten more efficient um, over, over those six years and wanted to see how these numbers compared with where we were at today. And so we, we ran the model again with the recycling that we were doing in 2010, and you can see there was an additional improvement in carbon footprint, in fossil fuels, and in, in water reduction because of efficiencies in how we're taking back the material, in how we're recycling the material, and in how our infrastructure is put together. And I'm pleased to announce today that the addition of the Vietnam facility alone 
and uh, the lowering of, of shipment required because we have this facility has the potential to add an additional 6% uh, reduction to, to our carbon footprint. Um, and so this is, this is uh, another example of how our innovation continues to expand um, year over year. So I'll wrap up by talking a bit about um, just how much we've accomplished with this program. Again, John Luke and I remember in 2003 and 2004 when we didn't know if we were ever going to be able to uh, create these, these closed loop cartridges. And you can see that there has been year over year growth of, of this um, program for the past seven, seven, six years and we're on track in the seventh year uh, to continue that. Um, I think one of the neatest things about this program is with millions of kilograms of material that have been used and the millions of cartridges that have been created, there's not been a single quality incident um, related to this material in terms of a customer issue. Um, so that, that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, when you talk about recycled plastics, often people have an image of less than, not as good, uh, and, and lower quality. But in this case, uh, in many ways, this material is better than the virgin resin um, that we were using. Now, I had mentioned a couple slides ago that, that uh, we had, HP had announced um, last year in September that we had achieved a milestone of 1 billion HP supplies that contain recycled content. 800,000 of those cartridges contain closed loop material. 200,000 uh, contain only bottle resin. Uh, but just this month, uh, we passed the 1 billion mark for cartridges that contain HP closed loop plastic. Our total is now 1.2 billion recycled content cartridges, but uh, one excuse me, but one billion of those have been made with material from the Laverne process. Uh, quite an achievement, and uh, just past this month. So I, I guess I'd like to just wrap up by going back to uh, An Anuka's discussion about um, HP's environmental commitment, um, beginning with. Uh, DHD founders, Bill and Dave, and, and uh, John Luke and I getting this opportunity to tell you about this program uh, could give you the impression that, that we were the primary people who accomplished this. But there were dozens of people at HP, um, many who do not have roles in the environment but have passion about um, doing good things for the planet that were involved in this project. And likewise, at the Laverne Group, um, many people who put in a lot of long hours uh, and, and have a commitment around um, doing good things for the planet. And I guess that's what gives me confidence to, to uh, end this presentation. I look forward to coming back in a couple of years and telling you about uh, the next innovation uh, that I'm sure this team will come up with. Thank you.